Hey, it's Joe Lyons from the Automator. I did a little excerpt from our live chats where uh, we had Tank, Tom and I, Tom from Tab Nation and I were on a call and we brought in Tank to discuss some other stuff. But someone asked how could they get into Calm, start learning Calm, and Tank went off on some really, to me, very interesting content, stuff that's way beyond my level of knowledge. So I actually learned a lot in it. And I wanted to make sure I excerpt it from that. It was like a you know two hour long call. So I pulled out just that part where Tank is talking about uh, Calm and its history and how to use it and all the stuff. It's really, it's it's pretty deep. So get ready to put in your thinking hat. But I also want to mention like here, if you go to the automator slash uh, dot com slash Excel, uh, that'll bring you to this page. It ends you up here. And here I have a lot of tutorials on using Excel with my Excel function library. So up here you can get the Excel function library and also uh, this Excel, let's see, where is it here? The webinar, Auto Hockey and Excel webinar, uh, those, that's also on Excel, but it's basically you're using Calm. Now, Tank talks more about the foundation of Calm and what it is and how to, all, you know, very programmatic level. This is more, if you're not at that level yet, this is really, to me, where I would be starting to start using Calm. Calm is incredibly powerful. It's built into a lot of Windows tools. Uh, it's it's really great that we have access to it with AutoHotKey. That's what the big, you know, one of the biggest changes from the vanilla version, the old version of AutoHotKey, like version one, and then the 1.1 is the AutoHotKey underscore L, right, from Lexicos. He incorporated the, the Calm built into it. And man, when they did that, it was so much easier to do so many things. And so uh, take a look at these videos, but go ahead and watch the rest of this video where Tank is expounding on this crazy stuff about Calm, stuff way beyond me. I'm going to need to rewatch it myself and, and learn from it. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, please feel free to comment in here and talk about you know other questions. We can get Tank back on and answer specific questions. So if you have any, please throw them in the comments. Hope you enjoy the video. Cheers. Um. Albert wrote in the chat here, he's, he was asking where's, you know, what's a good place to start learning about calm. And, uh, and what I just replied back there, I'm, I'm waiting for a response, but as uh, it's such an enormous topic, right? Um, chances are you probably, and here's, if it was me starting over, as I say, I, I started learning web scraping even before dot notation and it was really painful. What I would say is don't start with web at all. You know, learn either Excel maybe or Word or even PowerPoint using Calm because if Tom has Excel and Tank has Excel and I have Excel, it's all the same damn, you know, almost exactly the same. It's going to run on everyone. On websites, they're all different, and it's it makes it so much more complicated to learn. So picking... So, so I, I, I think this is a good opportunity for me to to um, help people understand calm in, in a way that is seems to be so mystified. So I'm going to pull the veil back. Cool. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to lift the veil. So angels are going to sing. The sun is going to shine. Uh, Go vir virgins will be lined up outside. Okay. So, uh, so back in the day, Microsoft was faced with this problem. How do you get applications to talk to each other and, and um, in, in a way that's safe? And they did this thing with something called DDE. It's still mm -hmm. around and it still works, but there were there were some real problems, some real security issues with it. And it doesn't matter what those were, but there were. And it wasn't very standardized. So the, the idea was really, you know, how do I make a steering wheel for a car? When in terms of ways to for applications to talk to each other, how do I do the equivalent of a steering wheel for a car? Okay. If I sit in a car seat and there's a steering wheel in front of me, I immediately know what it does and it works the same on every car. Okay. So what Tom did, uh, it was a solution for a language agnostic meaning it has nothing to do with the programming language you're using. Okay, it's the same for VB, for .NET, for AutoHotKey, for Python, for, it doesn't matter, okay? How do I make a communication method available for an application that is safe to use and standardized regardless of the language, okay? So, 
And, and, and just to reiterate and reinforce this point, COM has nothing to do with auto hotkey. We are implementing a COM interface for an application with auto hotkey, the same way we would with VB, the same way we would with Python or any other language you can imagine. Um, and that's really important that people understand that that's a distinction. The other thing that is important to understand is that it starts with the idea that you acquire an object and that object has methods and properties available to it, functions and variables for the less programmers, okay? Just functions and variables that are attached to this thing. So if I get an Internet Explorer object, that Internet Explorer object automatically comes with its own, regardless of language, functions and variables that are attached to it. So uh, the Internet Explorer object has a navigate method, a, a function, right? Uh, and it is called exactly the same way in every language. You call navigate object, then navigate, and with parameters like a yeah, URL and possibly extra post data or whatever, but navigate always has the same parameters and is used exactly the same way in every language, okay? Excel is another object. So if I want to know something about COM, I need only learn how COM objects are instantiated in my language. And then I want to look up that object on the internet and find their methods and variables, their, their properties and functions, so, et cetera. So let me interrupt your tradition for a second if I'm understanding you correctly as well, because I hadn't really thought this through. Let's say I go to Stack Overflow and um, site for auto hot, he, well, just site in general has a com object. Right. right. But the example listed is someone using JavaScript to connect to it. Yeah. And what you're saying is I could still study that perfectly fine and look at the parameters and what they're taking because it, it as far as the com objects concerned, it's, it's kind of like the DLL call. I'm just shoving stuff into it, but, it's going to be the same structure. Is that right? Right. Nine, nine percent, so right? so yeah. auto hotkey supports a dotted syntax. PHP supports a uh, hyphen arrow uh, syntax for object notate, you know, for, uh, for the object uh, oriented programming. But, but the bottom line is the, the only real difference here is how do I instantiate that object? Okay. Is it, VB's create object? Is it a .NET new something? Right. Is it, um, you know, which is what AutoHotKey does as well as a new, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't do it. It uh, does a create, uh, a com create object with it. Um, and, and here's the other kicker. These objects are identified universally the same way. So, Internet dot Explorer, I'm sorry, Internet Explorer dot application, whatever, uh, I don't remember, exactly. Um, is exactly the same on everybody's machine because oh, this is how these objects are registered. Com objects are registered on your machine when they're installed. They're all there. And, and in fact, I'm going to share my screen again because I'm going to blow your mind. I'm going to part the heavens and blow your mind one more time. Um, well, this is one because I've run into, and, and probably a lot of people, you know, that watch this have run into also, they'll, they'll try to do something and they'll say unregistered object and that you need to register it. Right. And that's where you're saying is like, you know, every once in a while you do. Well, have not everything can be registered. It has to become enabled in the application itself. Um, but whatever is registered, anybody can find you, you can, you can make a list of it, uh, quickly. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Easily. I have that script. Yeah. Well, right, but most people don't realize the guts of how stupidly simple this is um, in that script. So uh, let's open up my Visual Studio Code. 
Uh, kind of going back to what Joe was saying with, you know, where you should start learning is, you know, like Excel and stuff. You know, well, the, the, there's, the, the problem is, is that there's this magic, all right? It, it, and, and, and you need to, you have to pull the magic away well, it, for it, people here, to really get it. Every well, epiphany I've ever had teaching myself anything in code happened as the moment I understood at a very low level what was really happening. Yeah, I would just say, take at the beginning, I, I'm fine with letting it be magic and just plugging in some stuff. But I, I totally understand your point of when you really want to be able to write your own stuff and really get into it, you got to understand what's going on in the background, right, to really get it. But yeah, um, to just maybe step into it. You know, most people, they just need to right. understand how to create the object and call the function. All right. So at the, uh, at the very end, core of this. If we create an object, this wind management all by itself. Okay. This, this creates our ability to use Microsoft's WMI to write SQL-based queries for our system. Yeah, it's okay? very powerful. Yeah. Right. A great uh, so, so this is just a common database language. You can learn it anywhere. It's all over the internet. Um, and then I query this object, this table, this whatever you want to call it, uh, Win32 Classic Com Class Setting. Okay. Every Com object you have on your system is registered and available here. Every single one of them. And the prog ID is things like Excel.application, uh, you know, Internet Explorer.application, whatever it may be. These are the, the words. There's another one that this particular setup isn't used to query against, but it's the component ID, which is that long GUI ID. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so everything that is registered doesn't have a program ID. That's important to understand, but everything has a component ID. And that has to do with the fact that they're listed in your Windows registry. Okay. That's how they're listed, but they have some standard properties. And when I build my own private things, this right here, this Win32 Classic Com class setting, is actually the same term that Microsoft uses. So I can I can copy this, and uh, if I want to know more about it, sorry, I can't find copy all of a sudden, and, and I can hop over here to the internet, I can paste that in and search it, right? And lo and behold, I'm, I'm in Microsoft's documentation for what this object is, and I can see all of the properties that are available to it, right? People want to rename things and make them you know, easier to read, but I prefer naming things in ways that I can relate it directly to the source's documentation. The bottom line here is, is I can search my whole system for anything and find a com object that's related to it. Like, let's say I want to know something about objects that are related to Excel on my on my system. So, right. There's not just Excel dot application there. There's, there's actually other sub objects, right. That are um, completely independent. That, that you could access independently. Now I've done a little bit of VBA stuff. Does that have to do like when you're in Excel and VBA and you have these different libraries that you can turn on and off? Is that that, or that's something else entirely? No. Okay. No, no. So, so these are com objects registered on your system. Cool. Um, and, and so these are, these are all uh, served by the application itself um, and accessible. And um, the, the, the bottom line here is that there's more to know than basics, but all I have to do is I have to know how to instantiate within the language of choice you know, whatever this object is, right? So if I did a, for the sake of, of, of those playing along at home, I'll, I'll just, uh,
one thing I was going to say about Internet Explorer, too, is, you know, I don't know if he's using this for work, but I definitely would stay away from comms if you're going to be only solely using it for Internet Explorer. Most companies are removing it from their systems. Uh, so that's something to keep watch out, even if your company hasn't announced it. I guarantee they will very soon uh, remove it. Okay. Um, most of most com objects, in fact, do not spawn a window attached with your application. So we have to make sure that the window is is visible. Uh, but this visible property is if I look up. This program ID, right? Yeah, Al Albert chimed in. I, it's funny because I was just writing about it on my on my live channel here. But um, I have an Excel function library that has, you know, I'd say at least well, at least probably forty, maybe more functions with how to connect Excel and then do some of the very core stuff, and it's super helpful. Right. Yeah. So, so I can see here that this method is exactly what's listed in Microsoft's object documentation, right? I didn't pull this visible out of a hat. Sure. Right. So all I did was set it to true to make it on. And, and, and if I ran, you know, just this, it will open up an Excel window. And, and so the only thing that I needed to know outside of Microsoft's documentation of the Excel dot application was how within my language to instantiate. And to be more specific, just for people that aren't used to this tank, that com object create, or excuse me, com obj create that you have in front of you. That's where when you see them in the forum, you'll see slightly different you know, wording around that, but often they're very similar. Yeah, because the syntax changed a bit as we went through this. And and if you were in VB, it would be create object. If you were in JavaScript, it would be new active X object, right? Or or uh, whatever it is. I don't but to continue on, because I didn't realize, I it didn't think about it. The to the right of that, in between the double quotes, that is what will be the same for every program. That's what you're saying, right? The, the double quotes. Well, yeah, the Excel dot application. That is what right, is right. Just, this is the this is the program ID that is registered on my system. So now now that is standard because when Excel is installed, that is uh -huh. the program ID that Microsoft has chosen to register in your registry. Right. So here's a tip: if you are searching, you know what I typically do is I search the forum and Stack Overflow. You know, first for my support. However, you might not want to include the com object create in your query, right? So just search for the string he has there with right. And if if you first don't find it with auto hotkey, you know, allow it to expand it to search with anything. Because, and that's the other really great thing is when you start looking at the the I'll use Excel to, to create my VBA macro, and then I'll look at the code, and it's so easy to adapt to auto hotkey code because the the code is really similar. And would you be able to send me this uh, through email just so I can link it in the description? You bet. Just because, you know, I like to put the code in there that we talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it a little easier. You know, we were talking about the whole, you know, people <laughs> don't want pictures of code, so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Right. Yeah, we're getting up there in the time. Um, did anyone else have any other questions? So uh, just real quick here on the screen here, I, I did load, if I search this program ID, I, I come up with, here's that, that UID I mentioned, because that's how it's registered in the right. system. Um, right. And, now, and we have one, some one, other information here about it. We could have searched the registry for it as well, is my, is, is my point. Right. And, and I was going to clarify something you mentioned earlier, too. Every com object, let's say com object for lack of a better thing, um, the uh, the things referred to are going to have that Excel dot application. However, not everything has this CLS ID. Is that right? You, you, you mentioned 
Okay. Not everything everything, has some sort of everything, ID. everything is going to have a class ID, a, a GUI ID, that long series of numbers okay. and, and, and characters that's up there in the address bar. Yeah. But, but not everything is going to have a program ID. Oh, thank okay. you. That's what I was there are things that are intentionally hidden. Um, Tank or Tom, a couple of conversations with Isaiah slash Rap Rex about four months ago. And we were talking through, to me, this was really interesting. It really helped me click. Like you said, Tank, when, you know, the bells start going off is he's like, Hey, if you have a com object, there's an associated DLL call that it's working with. It's kind of built around. Is that right? You're connecting to it. Now that's not the reverse for every DLL call. They don't necessarily have a com object that we can, because it's kind of like the translator thing that you were saying. It, it allows us to connect to it regardless of our language. Right. The application or DLL has to have an associated setting enabled within it at a code level for it to register. Okay. And then I think he also said often there's much more functionality in the actual DLL than there is in the com object. So if you're trying to do stuff and you can't actually do it with the com object, you might be able to connect to the DLL and do what you want. It's just going to be a little more complicated. That may be true. However, I would say it is also significantly more risky uh, in terms of system crashes and uh, okay. triggering antivirus blocking. Ah, interesting. Cool. I mentioned that in one of my videos, actually. So. Uh, DLL injection is something that it's actually one of the main reasons auto hockey keeps triggering antiviruses. Interesting. So DLL injection, it has a lot of value, but if it's not wrapped a certain way and done a certain way, it just triggers antiviruses. So anyway, uh, the bottom line here is that all of this stuff is in your registry too. Uh, I mean, this, this isn't magic. It's not, it's not pulling this stuff out of thin air. You just, you, you have to understand where and how to look and, and you'll find it. And, and understanding that these are really, it's just a communicate. Com is a communication protocol. That's what it is. It's like HTTP. Yeah, we were equating it to like an interpre interpreter, which allowed you to easily connect to it. And it's talking to something else, but on its own, it's not doing anything itself, right? It's Right. It's not an interpreter. No, I, a, I... Right. Yeah, I meant like a translation type interpreter. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's yeah. a stepping stone that gets you into something else, but it allows you to do things much simpler than like... To me, I can play with the comm objects. Back to your point earlier, like you need to know all the stuff... Hey, all that stuff's good. Don't get me wrong, but I could start. I anybody can look at like my Excel function library, and if they understand functions, they could be using it so quickly. Versus trying to do that with DLL calls or something. Ooh, you know, it's a much right. steeper uh, learning curve. Let me change the analogy, the metaphor here for oh. you. Okay, so if a program DLL call DLL whatever is a house, a building, a business, whatever, right? something with four walls that everyone recognizes. Com is like opening the front door and telling someone inside what you want. A DLL call is like going in there and doing it. I love it. That's awesome. Okay. That's, that's really kind of the only difference. I love it. That's a really good analogy. It's, it's a very strong visual. Of, uh, yeah. That's how I've explained comms, actually, is using, like, a house and a door, but I never thought to add in the DLL part to that, you know, kind of analogy, yeah. so I like that. Yeah, yeah I've, I've literally used the house example before for comms. And, you know, yeah, like it's, it's the same way I explain database indexing, okay? If you have a database that you want to search and there's no indexes, it's equivalent to going into a neighborhood and knocking on every door and saying, does Sue live here? But if there are indexes, then you go to Sue's house and ask for Sue. And and back on staying on that same analogy, if you've indexed the address, but you're looking for Sue, that doesn't do shit, right? Like you have to right. have indexed right. off of the name for it to actually make a difference, right? Index right. is great, but it's got to be off the thing you're using. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I right. think we're running out of time here. If we want to start yeah. wrapping up a yep. little bit, we got yeah. Well, thank you, Tank, for for jumping on. Um, yeah, it was great to talk to you. Some very interesting stuff. You everywhere, so it's good to actually see you.